Yes. Hey guys, Alpaca77 here and welcome to my usual weekly silver player review video and I have a massive treat for you guys today, one of the most hyped about players in Ultimate Team this year, Inform Mike on the Ate. Now before we go into the review, I'd just like to say that I do not own, own an Inform Leite, I just borrowed him for the purpose of this video, so thanks to the guy who let me borrow him, you know who you are. So anyway, a massive, massively hyped player like Inform Leite, doesn't come cheap and on both consoles he's been going for an absolute ton. I'm of course on the Xbox and I've seen him go for between 1.3 and 2.2 mil and from what I've heard on the PS3 he's been selling for even more at about 2 to 3 mil. I can show you the team I use him in and I've put him up top with Inform Joe in a 3-4-1-2 with Marlos just behind at centre forward and Inform Renato Abro, Abro, something like that at centre mid. I could have included many more informs by playing something like a 4-2-3-1 but recently I've been using 3-4-1-2 for my Brazil Silvers and I prefer defending the three at the back so I stuck with this. We can look at his card stats and to be honest they're pretty crazy for a silver. They're fairly similar to inform Dan Lino's apart from Leite has better dribbling I think but you can see there Leite has the 91 pace, 80 shooting, 71 passing and 84 dribbling on the card. As usual, I'll show you his in-game stats, and he's right-footed with three, uh, uh, five-star skills and three-star weaker foot, I mean. His physical attributes are amazing with his 92 acceleration, 96 agility, and 93 sprint speed, with a few other great stats. His mental attributes are fairly average, but I was surprised to see the 93 aggression he has there. And last year, his skill attributes, with the best stats being his 86 dribbling, 87 finishing, 86 long shots, and 90 long shot power. Gameplay should be on your screens now and as Leite is a fairly special player and probably one of the most expensive silvers I'll ever review, I decided to include much more gameplay than I'd usually include in a review video, mainly because I scored a lot with him, so here you are. So where to start, there's his 5 star skills which of course is one of the main reasons why this player is surrounded by so much hype. Personally I wouldn't call myself a skiller so I couldn't get as much out of him as a so called skiller would but I can do pretty much all of the skills so I did have a mess about with him and tried to score a few more skillful goals with him so I tried to include a mixture of goals in this video. I'll talk a bit about his pace now and this is another of the reasons why Inform Later is so expensive. As I mentioned earlier in game he has 92 acceleration and 93 sprint speed but to be honest I had mixed opinions about this in game. When he didn't have the ball for example if he was running onto a through ball he seemed extremely fast but on the other hand when he had the ball at his feet I did find that he'd often get caught up by defenders. I know he can't be as fast as well on the ball but I did expect him to feel a bit faster but that may just be me or maybe it didn't help that I was against the usual Dede and David Luiz every match. I'll move on to his shooting now and I have to say his finesse shots are pretty crazy. I know I'll probably get the usual few people saying who cares if he can score finesse shots. Everyone can score finesse shots but I've said this before. In my opinion, yes, every player is capable of scoring a finesse shot, but it's how many they score that counts, and Leite scored tons of them. This was by far the easiest way that I scored. Uh, I found to score with him. Cutting in from the left onto his right foot almost felt like cheating at times, as even the most awful of finesse shots managed to go in. I know his normal version had a crazy finesse shot, but trust me on this one, the informed versions are much better. His power shots on the other hand weren't bad but I kind of expected them to be a lot better than they were. Maybe I was taking them from too far out but he missed a lot more than he scored compared to his finesse shots that went in almost every time. Saying this though, in the later matches I did begin to notice his 99 shot power as when he got his power shots on target they usually did go in. So yeah his finesse shots were a lot better than his power shots which I do think is quite funny considering he only has 68 curve I think compared to his 99 shot power. His finishing was fairly good but he was a lot better at scoring from further out just around the box than he was at scoring one on ones. When he got the chance though he never failed to hit the target and it, was usually take a, uh, it would usually take a good save from the keeper to stop him from scoring. His long shots weren't bad either but I don't think I managed to score any with, any with quite a few hidden the woodwork but as I was playing him as a striker he wasn't usually far enough from the goal to attempt a long shot so if he wants to take advantage of them he may be better suited as a centre forward or centre attacking mid. This links nicely with the next thing I'd like to talk about and that is his best position. I was playing a 3-4-1-2 so the only positions he'd really work well in were either striker or centre forward. As I already had Marlos as centre forward though I decided I may as well just keep him as a striker with Joe as I do like having both a left and right footed striker to cut in. Although he did score a lot of goals 
as a striker. I felt that while he was there, the likes of Joe didn't really get much of a touch as he usually try and get the ball to Leite all the time. I wouldn't say he was bad as a striker, but if I was to use him again, I'd probably try him as a centre attacking midfielder in a 4-5-1 or 4-2-3-1 formation as I think he'd be much more effective there. I've probably already touched upon the main points, but the last thing I need to talk about is his price. He's going for a ridiculous amount of coins right now and he's looking to be a lot rarer than I think we all thought he'd be. His price is definitely one of the biggest downsides to inform Leite, but if you have the coins and you enjoy Brazil Silvers, or even if you fancy yourself as a bit of a skiller, he may be worth trying to buy as, to be honest, you have an incredibly rare player, that one which I'll probably never play against online and one that most of you will never see online or even on the market after this week. So the question that most of you will want answering is overall, would I say is worth the coins? Now I try to make these as unbiased as possible, so I have to look at these from the opinions of many different people. If you have tons of coins spare, then go and buy him. He'd be worth it to you as he's a one of a kind player and what else would you spend your coins on before the end of this year's Ultimate Team? On the other hand, to the rest of us who can't afford him or could just about scrape up enough coins to put a bid on one, he probably isn't worth it as for that price you can buy plenty of other players, or if we're talking silvers alone, plenty of silver squads and probably an informed silver collection similar to mine. So I hope everyone found this review video helpful. I tried to get uploaded as quickly as possible as there's a lot of hype about Inform Later at the moment and not many people have been able to see gameplay of him either. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like as that always helps and I'm guessing most people will also be interested in player reviews of Inform Joe and Renato Abrao. I think that's how you pronounce his name again. I think I got it wrong. So those will also be up sometime next week. So look out for them. Thanks for watching guys and on the screen now should be some videos that you may have missed. To the left is a video uploaded as I reach 1,500 subscribers showing my updated silver uh, collection of silver forms and to the right is the most recent episode of my Squad vs Squad series.